Okay, hi, welcome to this second stream. Okay, hi, welcome. I'm a little bit flustered. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Um, hi, it's nice to have you. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. I was having some technical difficulties, so this is try number two <laughs> of streaming this thing. So here we are just trying this out. What I want to do tonight is to show you how to achieve a vet plate collodion kind of look using Photoshop. Uh, so if you want to join me, feel free to join in, edit your own photos and just, we can do something nice and fun and yeah, productive together. Um, nobody is here yet. I'm going to start anyway, because this has been just a weird kind of a we're kind of a little thing. Um, if you enjoy this, feel free to give this a thumbs up and uh, and a like and subscribe, even though I did have technical difficulty. Um, uh, I just, uh, I'm gonna jump into it anyway. And let's just hope this will go a lot smoother than the previous, previous little thing went. So, cool, 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 all right? here have a photo that I shot of myself uh, previously today. So what I have uh, in this photo as well is I have contacts, like I, I do have contacts now. I have uh, colored contacts on one eye and one eye is my regular brown, brown eye. And what I want to show you with this, I know I have a lot of 
powder on here as well or like a bronzer and this is way more than I would actually use on my face on a regular basis but um, this is just to show you as well as with the blue and the head scarf how colors different colors kind of work differently with this kind of a technique so what we want to start out with is to duplicate this twice so just the default uh, background layer we want to duplicate that we want to do for the middle layer here we want to have find something called high pass and for that I it kind of depends on the um, how far away the subject uh, of your photo is to the camera uh, further further away you would definitely need less like intense intensity I'm gonna use something like mm, let's give it four seven and I think I forgot to mention it but feel free to chime in in the chat if you have any questions hopefully I can help you with that I'm not a master at doing this I've done this technique a couple of times but I really enjoy it and people have questions so I just want to jump on here show you what and how I do it and what I do and how I do it and yeah let's just have fun with it the other thing is and I haven't really found the best um, solution to this yet so maybe if you if you know better than me what the best solution for the um, blurring effect is because so so the thing is with a tin plate or a wet plate collodion is that the f-stop of the camera is very 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 like it's very very open so the fo focus point is very shallow and I tried here to shoot it with I think it was f1.8 on this photo that I have here so I already have some blurriness in the background uh, but the lenses usually used are give kind of a like a bevel kind of kind of a bokeh so I've not found a way to do that just yet but if you have an idea we can try that out together uh, for now I'm just gonna use radial blur or maybe we can try ooh shapely I have no idea what this means to have it in shapes but we can no I have absolutely no idea what they mean that means how is shape blur is you ooh oh yeah okay oh interesting so this actually might be the thing this this paw print here might actually be our ooh okay cool I'm gonna do a little bit of this I think this is like 9 16 14 is good we're gonna use the paw so this is shape blur otherwise usually I have just used the the radial blur it gives kind of a more movement uh, kind of a ugh. no not that um what was it motion blur yes motion blur and just a little bit of it like let's say 21 pixels I think that's good so we can see oh okay so just to show you what the high pass filter does it kind of sharpens everything up and this is more extreme than I would like it to be but that's actually because we're gonna mix these two layers together so what I'll do is to select kind of the places where you want the focus to peek through and the focus is usually on a one plane thing and it's also very kind of um, 
I feel like it's always kind of random as well with so kind of if my finger is here it can't be in the same plane as the eye so let's let's just say that the nose is definitely out of focus I added some freckles as well because as you'll see later on whenever you have freckles and something like brown as my bronzer is that's gonna be darker once the photo is in black and white which is very interesting and I'm gonna show you how that looks so maybe something up here could fall into into the focus plane maybe not let's see and maybe like something a little bit down here could be in the same same thing um for the black and white we go to layer and we go to channel mixer um hit okay i do this as a and as its own layer of course because we kind of want to be able to go back into it and not bake everything together and what we do here in the uh, first off we hit monochrome here so as you can see this is just kind of basic black and white here okay it's not changing back <laughs> so this is just kind of kind of a basic black and white but what we can do and what we are going to do is to take this blue all the way up we're going to take the red channel and the green channel all the way down or not all the way down but so what we do now is to kind of just fiddle around with these guys here so this is what I was talking about. This is actually a little bit more strange now uh, because I used blue contacts, con contacts in my eyes the other day and now I have green. And so that is kind of on this plane, whereas the blue ones were way more popping out of, out of the photo. But do you know what I mean now when I say like everything because I had so extreme bronzer here on my cheekbones but now looking at it like this it's it's not as extreme if that makes sense or at least it's not to me Ooh. I see the focus is kind of throwing me off here it's a little bit mm, too much um, out of focus here on the face so I kind of want to bring some of it just ever so slightly back. Uh, uh, uh. So, like, this is a very drastic change. And what I decided to do now that I d decided not to do the other day was to actually um, have the background. Um, in a in a yellow like warm tone like look at that look at the difference here and you can always pre edit the photo just a little bit if you want to clean up the skin just a little bit like if something is bothering you like this part is for me it's kind of too dark um, so this is actually something that I would have gone in to change previously to actually changing it like actually doing all of this thing here um, but I think this is kind of cool um, another thing like if if we were to let's say we're happy with most of this here I'm gonna get a drink cheers <laughs> And like I said, feel free to participate in the chat. Um, I know this is a little bit funky because I had to change the links and have technical things happen. Woohoo! <laughs> but yeah, we can still, let's duplicate. Let's kind of, hmm, all right. I kind of want to have a safe keep of this. And do like so so we have do actually have a 
layer to work on right here. So as you can see, a little bit of my naturally brown eye is coming through here. So whenever I change it to uh, to the black and white, it kind of gets super duper dark there. So we can just try and bring some of that. Am I burning? No? Hmm, interesting. What I actually have usually done is just to desaturate it because that kind of minimizes the the darkness as well. And you can actually use the saturation, the desaturation tool to also like brighten up the eyes. So here I think this is a little bit too much, but definitely, definitely a change from the original. Let's get this more natural <laughs> and we can also just use the desaturation tool on here and just watch out to not do too much because like this is way better right with here with the eyes I'm gonna do ever so slightly here as well so after this, what I would go into, I think, I feel like the blurring of this is a little bit extreme, but I don't, I don't mind it really. I'm going to move on to uh, the levels panel here. And what we want to do is kind of crush the, the blacks, or I mean, not crush them in, not have them as heavily black, if that makes sense as well as the high tones because it, it's all depending on the chemicals people use and it's also uh, dependent on if you're doing like a tin plate or a tin type or this glass type but it's also just everything is very like black is never extremely black it's always kind of a grayish black and white is never like burnt out white so I'm gonna try to find a happy middle here where I'm still happy with the photo so as you can see I just taken aback a little bit of that I think this is even too much on here so maybe maybe like two would be the happy medium here for me and like I said we can go back and forth with the saturation and different colors of on, on this here so we can control it wherever we want and we can actually also if we're happy with like something like this but we want to get the whole thing lifted just a little bit we can also just grab a curves layer and do ever so slightly something like this to me this looks super nice actually <laughs> mm. what I would want to do to take this to kind of like the next level from here is to add some type of let's see let's add some texture I have a lot of textures here and let's just select some of it I'm gonna insert well a lot of them all right that was a mistake hey, hey. <laughs> so this is gonna take a second I hope everyone's doing good thank you for chilling here with me All right, that seems to be it. So uh, with these, um, <clears throat> what I like to do is actually just work on the image here. I usually like to just change it to black and white. Mm, and with that, ooh, oh no, no. 
I don't want to keep uh, get them too contrasted because I feel like whenever that happens, um, it kind of gets. I mean, this is just contrasted to begin with, so there's nothing really I can do to change that. But I really like kind of a a little bit of a authentic feel to the. You you'll see. Okay, so I've made this black and white and I want to use this on my photo here. It's all the way to the back. Oh, good job, me. All right. So let's drag this on top of here. Let's go. And we can actually just move this around. I like to invert this sometimes as well. Um, just kind of play around with the overlay types of it. Like something like this is cool to me for kind of like this part here as well as this. Let's see if we have any anything else. Mm. All right. Another thing is to actually invert this. So now we have different textures and when we go to the overlay settings that might be more interesting to us than the ones I had before. No, I actually actually prefer the what was it lighten here. And then you can because I kinda like it being over the face just a little bit. But to me this is too much. It's too too white. So let's open Let's see if we can fix that just a little bit without ruining kind of the the texture element of it. Mm -mm -mm. Something like this. I mean, to me, this is even better just from from the get go. So, and then we can start bringing back in things where where we feel like we want to get stuff back in. So maybe this is a little bit too intense here. Maybe we don't want all these smudges here. So all these textures are just from, what is it? Texture.com, I think you get like, mm -mm -mm, where is it? Free textures. <laughs> so this is just textures.com. You can write like paper. Um, if you decide to sign up, so you can use all these, you can make them black and white. You can actually use the color as well because all these types are actually not uh, perfectly black and white like this one. I have just yet to add the, let's do that now. Let's add the, I usually just use photo filter and just the warm one so look at that it's kind of just almost there already I don't like to put it on top of this so this is kind of strange though no, on top of here I feel like it's kind of a too bluish but maybe we can bring this back yeah a little bit And also, if you feel like this is too much in in the photo, like in the space, you can just make it a little bit bigger. And over places like this, I find this to be strange. So let's clean that up a little bit. So here, this thing is kind of bothering me, so I'm going to take that out completely 
And you can do layers and layers and layers of these these kind of things. The textures. And just kind of build everything up. <laughs> Sorry, I have flies. <laughs> mm, let's do one more texture just kind of down here. Let's see what we have. Mm -mm. So kind of like this, let's use just kind of this part. Mm -mm -mm. Let's use this part here. No, no. Uh. Where is it? Here we go. I kind of like this thing here. Um, just gonna quickly make this black and white. You can use black and white. You can use channel mixer. You can use whatever you want. Just whatever makes you happy. So let's just keep it like this. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, I kind of kind of like this. Another thing you can try out with these is just to kind of play around with the saturation and stuff. Um mm, Yeah. Let's do this. I have all the photos as well. This is not going to be the only one. I'm just going to kind of want to start out with this one and yeah, I think we can, let's move on from this one. And the nice thing Let's, let's talk, let's talk a close and personal. So the nice thing I find with when you have done this once before, you can actually take the channel mixer and maybe some of the levels and, and curves and stuff, and you can actually move it to another photo and that will help you with, make you faster and just kind of get into the flow of it. Uh. So hopefully that will make everything easier for you for kind of the next time. So if you actually follow this now, um, it will be easy for you to recreate this another time as well. Uh, in the meantime, while you watch me, <laughs> I'm going to find another photo that is not of me this time around. It's kind of like this one. I don't know how. All right, let's select this photo here, and opening it up. Exciting. Wow. And it's just, it's not doing it. Why? Why is it not working? <sighs> I don't know what's what the hell is going on, but we will get through it. Can someone tell me a joke? Because this is awkward. <laughs> it's very useful. I always want to learn how to edit picture. Thank you for sharing your art with us. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. That's so kind. Um, to be honest and to be fair, I found a tutorial how to do this online and kind of built on it from, from there. So this technique is definitely not 100% mine um, in the way how to achieve this. And I'll try to find the link to the article again and share that with with all of you so because i think
people deserve to get credit where credit is due. I kind of still want to jump on here, create the live stream in case someone had questions questions <laughs> about this and how maybe maybe if I would have answers to that, how I could help with with that. Okay, so the photo is actually up. <laughs> Photoshop has not, or just technology in general has not been my friend during this stream, so I'm sorry. Um, this is my friend Raquel. Uh, she's here in a beautiful dress. We decided to create something very um, kind of in the same vibe and the same vein as the photos during that era, like from the mid 18th, 1800 to early 1900. Uh, would look like they were people were always very serious and I also love that this dress is blue because that tells me it's gonna be very very light on the photo but the background is also it's not super interesting I wish I had remembered to take something to be able to put something on on the wall behind her but hey let's see how it comes out um ooh, <laughs> looking back at this it looks a uh, little bit much processed so maybe I want to take this down just a little bit mm, I don't know I'm gonna and this is also also the thing like with this just do take a step back do something else for for a hot second come back to it finish and you can also just do it without these I mean this is a cool photo either way so <laughs> I'd recommend that always to just stand up, take a little breath, just do something, give your eyes something else to look at for a second, uh, because you kind of get blind with just looking at this all of the time. So get a new kind of perspective and let your eyes rest for a second before you kind of decide to post this. Okay. <laughs> so. Like I said, this is uh, the only thing I did was to kind of drag the photo filter, which is kind of this tint of like a little bit of a brown tint on here, as well as the channel mixer here. And you can see she has green eyes and you can see how drastic this change is. Like this is so strange. So what we can actually do is we can dial some of it back and but I mean in at the same time it's super cool <laughs> to me at least I, I think it's very nice I'm gonna quickly just edit this photo. I can see there's some um, some weird things going on with, this, with the health of the stream. So hopefully, like if if it's doing a lot of buffering, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, okay, cool. Julian says I had no idea you could drag filters or layers from document to document like that so that blows my mind already <laughs> I'm happy to help uh, it's so nice like trust me it's so cool um, yeah so I mean I'm, I'm kind of happy with this already just because it changes so drastic because she has a lot of brown in her hair which makes it kind of black but still not, yeah, still not completely black. And the dress is so light because it's blue. So what happens is all the blues, like if we look at the channel mixer here, all the blues are interpreted as like lighter and everything from the green and red spectrum is kind of dragged down. Which is, I think it's so cool. <laughs> but 
then again, I'm I'm a simple lady. So if you go back to this, this is a, this is actually a thing that you have to do each and every time is to do the high pass filter situation here. And now you can see maybe 4.7 is an overkill for whatever we have here. So maybe let's just put it to 2.7 because she is further away from the camera. So you don't want the uh, like sharpened areas to be like crushed. So just go with like you can try this out and just go with your gut with whatever you feel looks good and this is also something you can go back and change if you don't like what you did so this is i'm going to change this to overlay here the high pass thing and you can see it's just doing kind of a subtle thing from from afar but if you look in closer it's actually sharpening this up a lot and then we do yeah i'm i'm still playing around with the with the uh, 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 like blurring thing i think this is closer to the uh, to the lens that um, is regularly used i, I can't remember for the life of me, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, yeah. So this is a lot. Let's tone it down to... I actually kind of like... Okay, this is a little bit strange here. I kind of like the paw. I don't know why. I've never used this before, so this to me is actually kind of cool. It gives it more, more of that bokeh thing than I feel the radial blur does. So without it just being just blurry, it's kind of a giving something else to it as well. So let's see. Oh, maybe this is it. Let's use this. And then we just go ahead. Maybe I did uh, too much of a blur there as well, but that's that's okay. So we just mask out what we want to be sharpened and in focus. I kind of take I. I feel like so many times this is just kind of a random plane that is like some some places are super sharp and others are but it kind of has to make sense to be on the same kind of a thing <laughs> that the it's either both of the eyes if the person is facing straight forward but if they're like that it can be this eye or this eye not both of them because that's just how focus works but I mean, it's also just, you can do whatever with it as you please, because it's, this is your photo. And if you want to keep everything sharp and in focus, you can do that. If that makes you happy, Ooh. <laughs> you can do that. That just, yes. So here I see, so what I actually like to do is to just Duplicate both of these. You can do that by dragging them down here, or you can do Oopa la not this Whenever It's so strange whenever I try to <laughs> mm, Yeah, can't remember the quick thing for it. I usually just do it whenever I try to Show you how to do it. I don't know <laughs> Which is not great when I'm trying to teach but I mean, so I just kind of keep them. I'm, I know I can be messy, but I want to just keep both of these under here in case I want to change something and kind of get these merged down together. That's control. That's not control. This is, um, yeah, this is control, <laughs> control E. And you can just du duplicate that. 
and if you want to edit something after like I want to lighten her eyes even more so with that I'm actually just going to use the saturate like the desaturation brush here and you can actually see it work just try not to go overboard with it I think this is actually nice it gives a little bit of a more lift to it I kind of want to keep everything very like you can see there, there's kind of a under eye th thing going on here but I think it's just so perfect with the the era that we're like nobody was kind of photoshopping that kind of a stuff and if you have something in a photo that is bugging you you can either just try to you can edit it first before you do all this stuff or you can try and let's see let's get some this is a lot or let's let's finish our sentences here <laughs> you can actually uh, edit the photo beforehand or you can actually just go ahead and use texture to hide something that you don't like so I want to have a little bit more light here on the bottom of her face as well as because I feel like this part is a little bit more bright than everything else so let's do a little bit of a highlight on her nose here and just like that like just using the desaturation brush this is what I've done just using that and it will be probably strange to see yeah like this is not naturally looking like the th parts where I have actually changed it but it makes sense on the final photo here so I really like this photo of her Do we want to do textures on this one or do we want to do one more photo? How are we feeling? Ooh. Don't forget the hands also. Just kind of go over these highlight spots that can be highlighted and just don't go overboard with it. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave this as is and take one more photo of her. Let's, let's all look at me while I find another another photo to quickly edit let's see do we want to do me or do we want to do Raquel hmm. let's do one with the candles we have But the bunnies are doing fine, in case anyone is uh, curious. Uh, here is one other photo of Raquel. Uh, and we were doing some, we tried another dress and some candles. So what I'm going to do is just grab the channel mixer and the photo filter, because that's more or less always going to be the... Oh, lordy lord, this is so cool. Look at that dress. But we have to, <laughs> we have to do some changes on this thing because it's not, it's not working. It's not doing the best. All right. So what, how do we want to play this? And this is also, like I said, I haven't done 
loads of these so I'm still kind of trying to figure out what is the best situation what's the best like clothing wise what's everything what's the best to do with all of these so um this is actually something I didn't I did not think the purple would be this crazy but it makes sense I always thought blue would get like bright and white but didn't think purple would get this crazy not as crazy as as blue at least so I'm gonna take it like this and then I'm gonna grab some mm, let's do levels and obviously you need to do something about the outline of the candles here hmm, that's very interesting though oh yeah of course because it has the the red um, line around it hmm that's also something I didn't really think about while we were taking the photos, but I usually don't shoot a lot with candles anyway, so <laughs> maybe that makes sense. So something like this. I still want to keep it. And it's not maybe what would have been good for me to do before. Let's try and let's do a little hack here. Mm. Let's change it to 16 bits. Uh, maybe that should have been the first thing I did before doing the channel mixer. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I need to sneeze. Nope, definitely not. Okay, so you can see some uh, banding, but that's also going to be something that changes once we have the blurring effect and everything like that. So it's uh, not the worst. Definitely not the worst. But to me, I think, mm, I think I'm gonna do another. I think this could be actually just be a better photo, like something like this, and just edit it in a more interesting way rather than a wet plate photo. So I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one of the ones I shot today of me self where I have the contacts in nope <laughs> sorry wrong button um I'm a pro can you tell all right so just grab the same two here I mean this is probably gonna be more or less similar to this one so you can just grab all of these and you can see the freckles, how it kind of just, how everything that is, because it's not, like my skin is not this crazy textured, or I mean it is, but it's not as obvious when you have, have it in color and when you turn it to like black and, black and white. And there's just something about doing weird faces and expressions to me that kind of very much speaks to this kind of a look I don't know and you can also see the brown nay no the blue here how because we have black we have blue we have slightly a little bit of green in here as well whenever this gets like this all turns white this is the green here this is a blue and yeah I, I like this so one more time we go to that's one too many we go to do 
this is gonna do go to overlay go to high pass and maybe this is even this is plenty enough right here with 2.3 Maybe not. Maybe it is. Ugh. Everything is falling apart. My eyes are. <laughs> wow. Is this the most chaotic stream? Yes, I think so. Um, this is kind of cool here. Maybe let's see how the blob is. How the heart. Mm -hmm, the heart. No, I think this is. The, the dog paw is definitely the one to go for here, uh, at least in my opinion. It gives the most... <sighs> What's the name? How do I say it? Pa... Pass... 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 Petswall. I'm probably butchering the name, but Petswall, you can, it's P E T Z V A L uh, lens, is the, the lens usually used for this kind of photography. And it gave, gave this beautiful bokeh. I've actually shot with this lens once, and where this type of. Um, lens from this manufacturer and it's actually it's very very beautiful it's very special in in a way that it doesn't fit everything so i did not buy it i did get the chance to try it and i kind of loved it and now i'm a little bit sad that i actually didn't buy it because it would be so so pretty with uh when shooting video um but i mean at least I got to try it. So here we, I'm a, I'm a fan of keeping the eyes in at least. So I kind of want to drag this out here. Leave the nose in, in blur. Something like this. And this part here, my hair would be in maybe so the back of this would be in. This is all out here. Let's do And this is actually just something you can fidget with for probably hours and hours and just see what you like and what type of filters you like to like if any if you want to put something on top of here so let's do the these freckles here why is it not doing it oh maybe because it's in nope hmm You can grab some of this back in, just whatever makes you happy. If it makes you happy, I'm more than happy. And you can actually look at the photo beforehand as well and see what is in the plane of the in the focus plane. So you can see like this front of this here is in focus when my face is in focus. So it would make sense to keep this part in as well and you can just utilize what you have in front of you to if you need any help need an extra help mm -mm -mm. let's get some extra texture on here let's try this one so it's <laughs> control J um, to make it, to duplicate the layer that you're currently on. Just if you need the shortcut 
Ooh, creepy spooky. Oh no. All right, so I'm gonna use this one here. And the same, you don't have to, even though you use all of this to begin with, you can always decide that you don't like something and just take it out. So let's play around with this just a little bit to see what kind of a texture we like. I kind of like this, but not this much, although... And the thing that you're thinking about as well is some of this is the photo and some of this is the glass itself. So you're kind of working with two elements um, <laughs> when you're looking at a photo like this. It's something that's actually on top of or like the part of the glass and actually in the chemicals and the picture itself and what's on the picture. So. What I can do here is kind of just go ahead and do use this star thing here. Do we like this? I don't know. This is kind of strange. Is it better inverted? Nope. Definitely not. And it is... Ooh. Maybe like this. Okay. And if it's not working for me, for you, it's just not working for you, and that's okay. Like, I'm still just learning and, and playing around, so... Okay. So just play with blend modes, really, and add some different elements as well that kind of ties everything back together. Oh, I love this photo. It's so cool. Wait. Yeah. Let's do something like this. If it wants to show up for me. I really like this one. And I'm just gonna make this a black and white and more saturated, just ever so slightly. And which one was the photo? This one. Let's try the blending modes. Maybe something like this could be cool. Or maybe not. Maybe it's better up here. I mean, this is just you playing around, see what works for you. Maybe this is something we want, just ever so slightly up here, and make it like that. I always want to try and get the edges to go away and not be like a big part of this. So. So, I mean, I think this is cool. I will probably crop it in at a square crop. So, I mean, maybe I should just keep it like this. This is kind of cool. It's like kind of like a handprint. So, if I do crop it here, then this would be the final image, which I'm happy with. I could also go in and change the eyes because I think it's so strange. I should wear blue contacts again. Apparently these green ones are not 
<laughs> not cutting it. Um, so maybe I should go around, play with desaturating the eyes again and see if that makes it cooler or not. This is all just about experimenting and I mean, I hope if you have any questions, then you feel free to just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if you're interested in joining me in this again sometime where the stream is not constantly buffering, I'm so sorry about that. I'll have that fixed for the next stream. So definitely join me next time. Feel free to subscribe. I'm still on the hunt, not on the hunt, still trying to gain 1000 subscribers before the end of this year. So I'll be happy to have you. And if you want to join me, I, I, I just want to make fun stuff. Have fun. Cool. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful evening or the rest of your day, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.